For the people with uh, earphones, you can take them off. <laughs> Israelis speak Hebrew. Americans typically don't speak... Uh, uh, Israelis speak English. Americans don't speak Hebrew. My name is Naftali Bennett. Um, word of background, former chief of staff of Benjamin Netanyahu, a major in uh, the Sayeret Matkal unit in reserves. Otherwise, I wouldn't be wearing this. Um, and in my last position, I ran the um, Yesha Council, which is the umbrella organization that represents the 360,000 Israelis living in Judea and Samaria, AKA the West Bank. The Arab-Israeli conflict cannot be solved. That's the bad news. So we can't solve it. The good news is we can learn to live with it in a bearable way and even more for the Arabs and the Israelis. Now, I know it's hard to fathom this, but many things in life aren't sol solvable. You might have a sickness as a kid, a chronic illness. So you don't commit suicide because it's imperfect. Life is imperfect. Uh, couples sometimes get along only 80%. You don't divorce just because of that. So this is a situation where I think anyone with open eyes can see what's going on in Egypt and in Syria. There's a huge wave of radical Islam um, taking over the entire Middle East. So thinking that we can isolate this issue um, is unrealistic. Short story. A few months ago, I met with the strongest person, the uh, Arab in Hebron, which is perhaps the most uh, difficult city in uh, Judea and Samaria. His name is Sheikh Ahmad Jabri. He's the head of the strongest clan. He's given up on the PA. He thinks they're corrupt. He doesn't want them. And he came and said, listen, you're leading the, the uh, Jews here. I lead most of the Arabs here. You don't like me. I don't like you that much. I'd prefer you guys wouldn't be here and vice versa. But we're here and you're here to stay. We're all here. I'll never sign an agreement that says that I give up the Holy Land of Israel. Not Haifa, not Tel, Tel Aviv, nothing. But let's sit down. I've got a laundry list of things that you can help me and I can help you. And that's what we did. And you know what? It's working. So it's not perfect. What I'd like in the two minutes I have now is to present to you an imperfect solution. Just one word before. Uh, can you hit the 3D map? Yeah. You know, this is an important map for everyone to um, comprehend. This is what Israel actually looks like. Not a 2D map, but this is what it looks like. There's a mountain in the middle, a very tall mountain, 1,000 meters high, and there's a very low plain of Tel Aviv at the bottom. The mountain happens to be Judea and Samaria. The low plain happens to be Tel Aviv and Israel's center. Essentially, if there were a Palestinian state, it would be like the Rockies Mountain being a Palestinian state, and smaller Israel would be Denver. I'll be very clear here. I live in Ra'anana next to Kfar Saba. Show where it is, Kfar Saba. No, no, no. Yeah, that's where I live with my wife and four kids. Not in five years, not in 50 years, and not in 500 years will I let anyone who threatens my children's life form a state that will shoot rockets at my children. I'll do everything to prevent that. However, what do I suggest? In a nutshell, in Judea and Samaria, you can hit the next map. In Judea and Samaria, uh, the next one, there's two, next. There's two types of areas. There's areas C, which are under Israeli control, where there's 360,000 Israelis and only 48,000 Arabs and the Palestinian control areas where there's 1.8 million Palestinians. Here's a new plan that we put forward. It's not a solution because it's imperfect, but it's the imperfect plan, but the practical one in a nutshell. Israel applies sovereignty on the Israeli controlled areas, offers full-blown citizenship to those 48,000 Arabs because we can't have two types of people living in Israel. So Ariel and Gush Etzion and the entire uh, Jewish uh, towns and communities would become part of Israel proper. I think, by the way, most of the Arabs will take residency, sort of like a green card and not full-blown citizenship. That's what they did in the Golan in a similar situation. 
In the Palestinian controlled areas, they have an autonomy. They control themselves, vote for themselves, pay themselves taxes, but it's not a state because a state would mean two things. They can have an army that would threaten us and they would have an influx of uh, refugees coming in from the entire Arab world. We cannot accept that. There's six million great-grandchildren of uh, refugees from 48. In the Palestinian autonomy, uh, they have, would have transportational continuity, which means freedom of movement. Any Arab in, in uh, Judea and Samaria can get anywhere without going through soldiers, period. Next point, no Israeli and no Arab is forcefully expelled from his house ever, ever. You just don't do that. You don't take people out of their houses by force and certainly not the uh, 200,000 uh, Israelis, never again. Finally, Israel retains a, a security umbrella, which means we have good intelligence and the ability to thwart terror, but only with a tweezer get the terrorist and not hurt the good guys, because the overwhelming majority of the Arabs just want to live. We massively invest in the economy of Judea and Samaria and focus on what we can solve because there's so many good things we can do to make our lives and the Arabs' lives better instead of wasting time in Oslo and Annapolis, which only creates uh, misery here. That's the gist of it. Imperfect, it's not the solution. Whoever says there is a solution is shooting for perfection but will bring disaster. This is the way, thank you.